Hello everybody, Peter of England bringing you an update on the recent statement that I was going to make a webinar. Um, it was due to go out really on the 15th. Uh, that was the proposal, but I hadn't quite done enough research to justify the, um, the main points that I really need to cover in depth. So what I'm talking about today in this video is just why you should attend this webinar. Um, it will be a webinar in a series of webinars because the degree and complexity of the material that I'm trying to incorporate into it uh, obviously can't be digested even if it could be covered in one, one session. So over the next couple of months what I'm proposing is to hold a, a series of these webinars um, some of them will be uh, internet based and maybe hopefully some of them will be physical meetings but that depends on how things work out over the over the coming the coming coming weeks so the webinar that is going to be the introduction and highlight the course content will take place on Thursday the 23rd of February and that's going to be 6 o'clock London time, 7 o'clock Munich, Texas time will be around noon or noon. And I think for people in Australia, if they're caring to join, it'll be a little bit early, around about 5 a.m. in the morning for Sydney. Um, other time zones, relatively different, of course. Now, the entire basis of these webinars is going to be how to reclaim your estate or more importantly your securities. Now we have two schools of thought in the way that this should proceed. The classical guru teaching on this type of material is it's complex, there's a lot of law involved, there's a lot of um, financial, um, economic terms and uh, legal arguments involved in it and that you have to have a standing and a presence in the court not only with the documentation that you supply but also your standing if you go in front of a judge on a, what's called a, either a protective order or a special appearance which gives you then the ability to explain the situation that you are, um, you are in and you're expecting the, the court to follow. So the main things that are involved in that and this is, this is, yeah, this is not anything new the main things that we'll be looking at are something called a certificate of live birth, the birth certificate, and the social security number, or in the UK, that's called a national insurance number. These, this is basically trust one, trust two, and this is what's called a pass through trust. There are, contrary to what many people think, no, no funds or no res in here. This is just something that passes through to the straw man. So that's the straw man account and that's everything concerning you. Because since what we have here was the presentment of a certificate or a bondage warehouse certificate, from this point here, the certificate of live birth, then the birth certificate, it produces something now which is in effect a vessel. So for all intents and purposes, 
when you are、um, when you are stopped or when you are presented with a bill, when your vehicle is stopped at the side of the street by the police officer wanting this, that, and the other from you, what they're doing is they're impounding the vessel. So this is the structure here, and what we've got to do is we've got to look at many things、uh, from QCIT numbers. Right the way through to what's called、um, entitlement, entitlement holders, securities intermediary, etc. But the main thing we're trying to teach practically here, and this is why it's important for you to start to get a grip of these things,、uh, is that we once we take control here. All of this, everything else follows and drops into place. So, these two schools of thought are one that says you need to take a long time to study the law; it can take years and years and years, and it's a case of trial and error. The other school would be just to suck it and see. You know, you you have to try and learn and educate your, yourself as you go along,、um, but the. The approach or the ideology or the religion that I'd like to offer here is that you have enough information at the present to succeed on a basic level. You don't need to go too deep into all of this. You just need to start the ball rolling. So everything in here is is really to do with what's called moving titles. Moving titles in trust. There's accounts payable and accounts receivable, and all this nonsense about legal tender. The fractional reserve notes and promissory notes are the way to paradise within this、uh, Genovese Venetian.、Um, Banking family double entry bookkeeping system, in a way, is a bit of a blind because everything to do is everything within the financial community at the highest levels is all to do with moving what's called titles in trusts, and this is what we're going to have to dig down to and and show you how to. So any procedures that are brought against you in a court, and I'm only now giving you to keep reiterating. The content of what we're going to cover in the webinar is to give you practical examples of what to do and how to handle yourself. Okay, so these are the ideas that you need to to stick in your mind, but you don't have to know them to the extent that maybe some of the the, the gurus would expect you to know. So, though there is work to be done, it's not to say you can't start the ball rolling, and you can start the ball rolling very easily. By two two factors.、Uh, one, there is a document that I've already produced on the website on、um, uh, removement dot net, and that one is called Skyhook. That's an emergency procedure. That's for getting you out of a situation in court where you're being dragged into court virtually. Virtually dragged into court, and you don't really have much of a, a fast remedy to get yourself out. So have a look at that. That's really withdrawing your consent to the proceedings, refusing to take、uh, a contract, and refusing point blank to act as surety for the, what's called the bid, the performance, and the payment bonds that are operating behind the scenes, sort of under the judge's the under the judge's desk. So these are important things for you to know and be able to handle. The next one, which is a little bit more complicated, is what's called the Lazarus taxon. The Lazarus taxon is going to be the mechan mechanism that I'm going to show you how to construct it. There is a document that will be there for available. Not so much in the form of a template, but on a on a very should we say structured series of guidance guidelines, which you then have to interpret or or not interpret,、um, complete yourself because only you will have the the specifics of 
For example, either a court case number, the mortgage or the loan document number, or the, the vehicle identification number that's necessary to process this. But this is something that you can send to all the creditors, anyone that is looking to uh, take money from your straw man estate, which is linked in here, and we show, I will show you how to defend it with a degree of accuracy that can only be, uh, could only be proven by the way it will work for you when you refuse to accept the position of trustee that has been falsely allocated to you following things that happened here. The reclamation for the estate will mean that you will reclaim the benefits of the estate back to the age of 18 years. So that is quite important. And what we've got to look at here is there's a fact that there is a basically a spiritual and how would I, I would describe it? There's a, there's a spiritual domain and there is a commercial or uh, physical domain. And the entire teachings within the Roman Catholic Church are based on something called, let's do another color, transubstantiation. That's turning one thing into another. So for example, when a baby is born, commonly in European countries, the first thing that's happened in the delivery room is that the child has its soul, its soles of its feet imprinted onto a pad. And that pad represents the feet or the soul first making contact, not with the land, so lex terrae, the law of the land, but onto the land, the card being issued by the Vatican. So that then goes into the registry. The next thing then is that a sample of blood through what's called a heel prick process is taken and five drops are usually put onto a card to symbolize now that the Vatican owns the, the body and the soul of that individual. It is also interesting to know that under a birth certification, whether or not the child is born alive or whether it is still born, it still requires a birth certificate. Also, maybe on the subject of this, look at what used to be called in English common law a settlement certificate on what was involved in that. All these things will be covered in the webinar, not necessarily in detail in the first one, but this is the type of stuff that once you know it or have a brief um, ability to express it, doesn't have to be uh, um, pitch perfect, but it will be enough so that the judge in the court or the prothonotary, uh, as they're sometimes called, the clerks of the court in the United States, will see that because of your paperwork and what you're alleging here, you have enough to conduct yourself in, a, in, a, in a, a responsible manner. So what I'm advocating here is you have got to start to make a 180 degree turn. You have got to become uh, the king in the court, not go in there asking or being asked as king. You've got to go in as the king itself. So you've got to remember that the, it is the judge who is the trustee and the, the prosecutor, which used to be called pro ex Executor, you see, for the executor or for the out of the body uh, individual, the judge and the prosecutor are working a double act against you to make you assume the position of trustee. Because unless they get you to accept that, then 
the case goes nowhere. So the lender also, from what we're going to explain here, just because you have been, just because you've been loaned money, a lender is not necessarily a creditor. For example, I can lend you my jacket, but it doesn't mean you owe me money for it. Um, so creditors will tend to perform as lenders, but lenders aren't ne not necessarily creditors. And this is something you've got to get your head around with the fact that for many people, um, the paying of income tax, for example, not only is it voluntary, but don't forget that income tax is only applicable to a, 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 basically a profit made from a business. Your wages, that which you earn as a, a working man or woman, are not taxable because you're receiving since 1933 in America, 1944 in the rest of the world, you're receiving promissory notes. And promissory notes are liabilities or sorry, pr before 1933, a promissory note was an asset. And since 1933 in the United States, now the promissory note has become a liability. OK, it was an asset. Now it's a liability because it's a promise to pay. It's a promise. And therefore, how can the HMRC or IRS expect you to be paying tax on something that is a negative. Yeah? In effect, it's a debt, it's an IOU, okay? So we've covered much of this, much of it will be covered in the webinar. One of the main things that we also need to look at as far as vessels are concerned is that if anything is placed onto your your property or your physical property or your physical being like a, a mortgage foreclosure, what in effect is being applied to you there uh, is something called a maritime lien. That means the vessel or the unit has been impounded and it can be impounded for all sorts of reasons. But the main thing to, to know here is that this is where you're operating in all of this is operating under Admiralty Law. And the presumption in Admiralty Law is that you are guilty until you are proven innocent. This Admiralty Law has to be put in place since the bankruptcy of the United States because it couldn't otherwise carry on trade and you as a unit have been pledged as chattel security or surety and therefore everything needs to be underwritten by an insurer and that is what's going on here with these certificates and this value of the mineral estate or the, the, the actual earth itself which your, your energy and your labor and your soul have taken control of. So the Lazarus taxon is something that is for your creditor to show you that you can basically stop him in his tracks. One of the ways, and this is just a, a, an idea to get the, the, your uh, mind around some of the things that we, we, we can easily cover. Um, many of you out there have had your properties taken from you uh, or about to be foreclosed upon. Okay. Now, it's one of the most uh, traumatic things that could possibly happen to you and it's not something that anyone would want to happen to you. But what happens here is with a foreclosure of your your house there is a way to stop it. OK, now many of you would think, ah, no, but all this, this talk about going into court and claiming the equitable rights and trying to defeat uh, the, the, uh, the judge uh, by arguing the case, you'll never win in their courts because facts is facts 
and they can do whatever they choose within that court. So instead of trying to argue it and break it down, what you do is you go in and you basically use the straw man accounting and the estate claim to do the work for you. And a practical example of that would be something like instead of allowing the bank to foreclose on you, you declare bankruptcy. And what do you have to do when you declare bankruptcy? Whoopa. What you have to do when you declare bankruptcy is you have to list your assets. So as you are listing the assets that you have, like your car, whether it's on finance, uh, other debts that you have, you write all of this down. And what is then done is that the bankruptcy court will appoint what's called a lawyer trustee. In the UK, for example, maybe in Australia, it's called a trustee in bankruptcy. But the first item that you place onto your list of assets at the very top is your birth certificate. So that correctly done now, basically making it a special deposit, making it a trust item, making sure that you have endorsed it, places it at the top here with now a reclamation of your estate. What makes it easier now though is that you can go into a dialogue with the trustee in bankruptcy because he's now got an obligation to pursue all the credit that is available to you on the estate. And if you don't put that in, then you just walk into a train wreck like everybody else as a normal individual, then try to take everything from you and then declaring you bankrupt for, for the next three or, or six years. In the UK, you can get out of it, I think, with under a year. But the one thing is, once you're for, once you've actually declared bankruptcy, the creditors can no longer come after you for the possessions that, or the, the assets that you supposedly have. And if this is done correctly, it is enough to pay off all of this and this and still leave you with a lot left over. So that's really where I want to, to take you. We are in, in effect showing you how to avoid, avoid going to court. Use the paperwork for your claims. And we do all this via the clerk of the court. It's all done through chancery. And it is not done through the criminal aspect of the, either the magistrates or, or a district court or any of the, the higher courts. Um, the Sestwiki V acts also play a part. That's Act 1, 2, 3. And the 1666 one comes in at, at four. So within this webinar and within the future workshops, we'll concentrate on that. But practically, I keep re reiterating this, this isn't something you're going to have to still be doing in November. The, the target here and my personal um, objective for you is that within the week or two after the webinar, you'll have sufficient information from using Skyhook here and this to pay, p place 
the creditor in any court case on a stop, on a hold, because we use the trust. All these cases, all these um, entitlements are already there on the table. You don't have to create lots of new paperwork. You don't have really, you probably do maybe in the United States need to do UCC1, etc. But from the vast majority of the paperwork, it's actually standing there and it's got your name on it. So all you're really going to have to do is reclaim it as part of you becoming what's called the beneficial owner of the estate. And once you get to this stage, everything else just stops and there are many aspects where you can, you can die without needing a death certificate. So, for example, um, there's an IRS form, and I'm not sure what, what number it is, it slips my mind, and that's basically reappointing a fiduciary agent. Now, if the straw man just so happens to be that fiduciary agent, you can cancel it out and you can create a proxy. Not necessarily saying we do that, but that is a possibility. So when communicating, when putting this, um, these, these, these letters and this communication to the court, we always come from the perspective of beneficial owner or grantor. Occasionally you will be representing yourself as the trustee for the straw man, but that's something that will be explained more and more as we go along. So I think I've covered, I've covered most of the things that I need to cover here. Um, the main thing then is to make sure that you, you, you turn up for the webinar. I'm trying to see if, uh, if there's anything else I've, I've missed. I don't think I have. Um, no, I think that's about all. The, the webinar uh, will be mentioned down, the, lo the, 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 the location for um, um, joining the webinar or booking your seat. Uh, will be in the link below, but it will be at www.removement.net and it will be in the shop and it will be under Lazarus, okay? So that's, in effect, what we are teaching you, how to bring yourself back from the dead, because in this realm, as we've said and we covered previous, these guys here, senior executive service, there's a senior foreign service, all these individuals that are looking to control you uh, are doing just that. And if you want to see how deep it runs and how urgent this is, uh, what I would uh, encourage you to do is um, the following. That says Illuminati.com, okay? So what I'd like you to do is to go and open your web browser and type in I-T-A-N-I-M-U-L-L-I Okay, so type in Illuminati.com backwards and see where it takes you. So it's hidden in plain sight. These organizations and agencies that you think you're, that are working for you are not. Uh, allopathic medicine is a death sentence. There is no rule of law in the United States. There is no constitution in the United States. There is no uh, uh, constitutional consideration for anyone in a Commonwealth country or anywhere. So what we've got to do now is 
grab hold of the nettle and we've got to do something about it now. You haven't got a year or two. Um, the degree and the speed at which the social credit systems are being introduced now, the way that 20 minute cities in the UK and elsewhere are being introduced, where you need to get out of your, your block of flats or your social, um, your social community area. You need not only a, a, uh, a QR code, but face recognition to move through a turnstile to allow you to go into the world. That's the way it's going. It's going to be a nightmare. So let's start to do something about it. Go to here, removement.net. Go to the shop, go to where it says Lazarus and the, the webinar uh, is featured there. Um, we have, uh, we don't have unlimited amounts of capacity, but we have enough to get you through. So uh, please go there, pass this video on to whoever thinks it might be of use to them. And uh, I uh, will be posting another video very soon after this one, which is even, uh, is very interesting uh, because this one is as well. So Peter of England saying, thank you very much for, for watching and uh, subscribe and pass it on to whoever you think will benefit from it.